What's up nerds, this is Mr. Storm, and today we are going to learn how to use an application called Microsoft Code Writer. This is the application that we are going to use to build our websites in this class. Um, now, there are plenty of applications you can use. Um, anything from ad advanced as Adobe Dreamweaver, all the way down to Microsoft Notepad. Um, but we're going to use Code Writer because it's a good middle of the run or middle of the range program that is free that everyone has access to. Um, it provides us some benefits uh, over using a very simple program, but it doesn't have all the features and confusing things that we don't really need to worry about from some of the advanced programs. So I'm going to show you how to get access to it. First of all, if you have it on your computer already, which most of the computers in the lab do, but some of them don't. But if you have it, all you have to do is go down to your Cortana search bar and type code writer, and it will pop up right there. It's uh, this little pencil in between these two brackets here. Now, whenever you click that, it'll open up the application. Now, if you don't have the program uh, and you're using Windows 10, then instead of, uh, instead of it being up here under best match, there'll be a section down here that'll say store uh, right there and then it'll have an option for it in the store. And you can just click on that and download it from the, uh, from the Windows Store. Uh, it's a free program, so don't worry about it. And I'm giving you permission to download it on the computers in the lab if you find one that doesn't already have it. We're going to go ahead and open it up. <clears throat> now, what we see first is this page. Uh, this page is our new document page. Um, if something else other than this opens up, it means that you're using a version of the program where someone has already worked on it before. They've already uh, opened a file, and so it's just going to open the previous previous file. Um, uh, to get back there, you just go to App Commands, and then you hit the New. But anyway, so this is the page that we want to see when we open it up for the first time. And this page is going to give us the option to create a new document. There are a lot of languages that CodeWriter supports, um, but we really only need to be concerned with HTML and CSS in the next term. Right now, uh, for this term, we're going to be focusing on HTML. So I can go ahead and click HTML, and it'll open a new HTML document. Now, all this stuff right here probably looks confusing to you. And I understand that. I get it. If you've never done any web design before, um, this is going to look uh, like Greek. And um, it's supposed to because you've never done this before, and that's okay. Um, all of this will be explained to you uh, in the next couple of days or so. Uh, next lesson is going to get into the details of what each of these things mean um, and how to use them and how to, how to understand them. But today I just want to show you how to use the application. So from our basic uh, bare bones program or our basic file that we've that we have, um, we have a couple things that we need to look at. First of all, what I just did there was I selected all this information between the first and the second or the first and the last line, and I hit tab to uh, make them all uh, go over one. That's my preference, um, but you don't have to do that if you don't want to. Uh, but I'll show you a couple things you can do. Uh, if you click Advanced down here in the App Preferences, uh, you can tab uh, all those selected lines. You can untab the selected lines. Oh, <clears throat> you can untab, uh, or yeah, or you can uh, reduce the indent or increase the indent. Sorry. Um, you can also. Uh, you know, duplicate lines, you can trim all the trailing white space, uh, which is good. Uh, some some editors or some applications don't like having white space at the end of each line, so you can trim that white space off if you don't want it. Um, and there are all kinds of things you can do here. You can, you know, make things capitalize, make things lowercase, add comments to your code, uh, and it'll add a comment, which you're going to learn about later. Um, but... Uh, Um, the, this, this application gives you the ability to do that with just a click, um, which is great. Um, up here, you're going to find all the documents that you have open, uh, documents that you've been working on. Uh, I don't, I only have this one document open, so, uh, it, this is the only thing there, but I can add new documents to my workspace, um, by 
and when I do that it'll bring me back to this page I can add new ones or find ones from my computer that I already have open um, <clears throat> sorry about the barking dog <laughs> uh, so yeah so that's there um, I can also go in here and this is gonna be super important I go down here and click save and I can save my files now here's an important thing to note about saving um, you want to make sure that you're saving it as an HTML document, okay? So you need it to be an HTML document. Uh, and for this assignment, we're going to name the document about me, okay? About me.html. And you want to put it in a place where you can find it. I'm putting my stuff on the desktop uh, just because it's easy for me to find it there. Um, and then you click Save. Now let's go ahead and take a look. Um, so if you look here, I now have a file called aboutme.html. And you can see it has this Google Chrome icon on it, which means it's a web document. Now, uh, Google Chrome and Internet Explorer, well, Internet Explorer isn't a thing anymore, but Microsoft Edge or Firefox or any of your web browsers are going to rec rec recognize any file that has a .html file extension on it as a web file and it will open those in the browser as a web page <clears throat> excuse me so if I double click on this file it will open it up as a web page and there it is now it looks like maybe there was a mistake right maybe there's you know I'm missing stuff there's supposed to be stuff on this page but there's not because I have nothing in my web page yet I have nothing there, okay? Um, but it is a web page. It opens as a web page. And I can see where, um, you know, things would go if I had them in my, <coughs> in my file. And just for example, you don't have to do this, but I'm going to show you what it would look like if I had something in my web page. Now, really quickly, before I move on, I just want to show you something really fast. Um, notice that when I started typing... I started my line with an open uh, angle bracket. I typed H1, and when I closed the, that bracket, it automatically added this string of characters here. Now, this is important because this string of characters is my end, uh, that's my end tag, my closing tag for this H1 opening tag. H1 is a header, and so I'm creating a header and CodeWriter knew that because I created a header opening tag, it knew that I was going to need a header closing tag. So it made it for me automatically, which is really handy. It's a really nice uh, part of this application. So I have my H1, and I'm going to type yeah, my name. Um, so now I have this H1 uh, with my name. So when I load my page, what do you think's going to be on there? Um, Think about it, because uh, you might be wrong, you might be right, uh, but let's find out. So I'm going to save my document. I'm going to go over here and refresh my page. And you can see that what showed up on my document is my name in big, bold letters, because I wrote it as an H1. There are a lot of different things that will allow you to add information to your web page. Um, I can do an H2, which is a second level header. And I can put my name in it. And we can see the difference between an H1 and an H2. So I'm going to save my document again. Go back to my web page. So now you can see there's a difference. There's an H1 and there's an H2. Same words, but just different elements attached to those words. So they have different ways of showing up. Uh, there are even others like a paragraph, a paragraph element. And I'm going to go ahead and save that as well. And refresh my page. And so a paragraph element is just regular, you know, 12 point font. Um, it's smaller than the others. So we can see there's a difference in size and font decoration based on the element that's attached to the words. Okay. We're going to dig real deep into this kind of stuff in the next couple of days. Um, but I want, what I want you to do for your assignment is, actually, I'm just going to have you go ahead and open up your, 
open up a document like this. Um, up here where it says title, I want you to change this to about me. Uh, what this does is, I'll save it. What this does is it takes this uh, text that's displayed in your tab and it turns it into whatever's in between those two things. So I want you to change it to about me. And then I want you to create an H1 just like I did here and write your name inside of it. Okay. Um, now, if your document looks just like mine, perfect. That's exactly what you need to do. Um, all I really want from this assignment is to see that you can open new files and you can change them and manipulate them and add new things to them uh, and that you can save them. Um, so I'm going to save my file one, one more time. Um, and then when I'm done, I'll have this about me.html file. I want to upload that to Google Classroom. Okay. I want to go back to my Google Classroom and I want to put it into this assignment because that's how you're going to prove to me that you've completed this assignment. You've watched this video. Um, when you're done with that, you can move on to the next assignment. If you have any questions, please let me know. I am here to answer anything that you need me to answer. Um, and I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.